Man pours jellyfish into bathtub. Numerous box jellyfish, which are highly poisonous, swim in the icy water. The tentacles of the jellyfish touch the man's arm as if they find sustenance, and then all attach to his hand. Ben felt so much pain that he tried to scream but lost his voice. When the pain became too great, he grabbed the shower curtain and cried out. Then the shower curtain was ripped off and had lost his life for good. Ben had called the police before he entered the water. There was a note on the side of the tub that said, don't touch the jellyfish and get me to the hospital now. He knew he was hopeless, but the organs in his body could have saved someone else's life. That was the unbearable pain in his life. A year ago Ben and his wife were on a driving trip. Suddenly he received a text message on his phone. So he subconsciously went to pick it up, but then a light suddenly appeared in front of him. Seven people in Takars died, but he survived. Ben has been suffering from conscience for the past year. Not long ago, his brother was suffering from lung cancer. So he donated a lung to his brother. This incident gave him inspiration. Six months later, he donated his liver to a woman. Then he started looking around for a donor and wanted to give to others. But he wouldn't give to everyone. Every day he would check the conditions of the donor. There was a man who needed a bone marrow transplant. He runs a nursing home. When he confronted Ben, he exaggerated that he was good for the elderly. Ben believed him on the surface. But in private, he went to the old people to find out what was going on. In fact, the old people in this nursing home were suffering. The drugs the men gave them accelerated their deaths. Ben looked at the old people and felt terrible. He took the old man out of the room to take a bath. When the man saw him, he tried to explain, but all he got was Ben's angry yell. Ben was almost fooled by this hypocritical man. Then Ben turned his attention to another person. He was a well-behaved boy. Ben smiled tenderly at him as they looked at each other. At that moment a woman approached because she noticed that Ben was always looking at her too. In fact, this woman, Emily, had a failing heart and she was one of the people Ben wanted to help. At this moment, he is disguised as a tax collector checking her taxes. Emily was tired. She had just gotten out of the hospital and wanted to go home. Ben shows understanding and leaves. Soon after he visits Emily again, he walks Emily's dog and has a good laugh with her. But after a while, Ben's attitude turned critical when it came to the issue of organ donation. He said Emily didn't think she deserved a heart donation because she had lived a very ordinary life. Emily was stunned. Soon Ben adjusts his attitude and says he will postpone the repayment for Emily. Emily was grateful but also a little surprised. She asked Ben why he was helping her because Ben thought Emily deserved a new life. Ben looked into Emily's eyes and didn't stay any longer but left. A man who wants to die can't stay with someone all the time and he had to go find the next donor who will save this blind man. He worked so hard to serve his clients but they kept insulting him for being blind. The client says his life is full of beautiful things but this blind man can't see anything. He doesn't know why the client is so angry. He didn't know what had offended the customer. But he just politely thanked the caller and said goodbye. Then the man who had just called covered his face. He had just used all his strength for those insults. Suddenly he went crazy. Smashed things and kept reciting a few names. These were the names of the people he was about to die. To help. The blind man was mild-mannered and would play the piano after work. Ben followed him silently and listened to his music. The blind man stops a waiter at a restaurant while he is eating, and he makes a clumsy but gentle gesture to her. Ben smiles at the sight of it all. He thinks they both deserve a better life. Ben gets a call from Emily when he gets home at night. Emily's health is very bad. Her frequent fainting spells put her in the hospital. The only thing she thought of at that moment was Ben. She asked Ben if he ever thought about death. Ben said he did occasionally. He told Emily stories as he walked to the hospital. By the time he arrived, Emily was already asleep. Ben gently took off her phone and Saturday on the edge of the bed. He said, I think about dying every day. The next day, the doctor came and gave Emily a pager. She said that if the pager rang, it meant the organ donor was available. Emily's heart was enlarged, so she didn't have many days left to live. She was optimistic in front of the doctor. But when Ben was about to leave, she took Ben's hand. So Ben stayed. Later, Emily was discharged from the hospital and Ben took her home. Emily chattered in the car asking him about his past. Ben answered all her questions. Only when she asked about his relationship experience. He was silent. That was the pain of Ben's life forever. Emily was a little lost. Ben took the time to help her mow the lawn to make up for it. Sure enough, Emily found out and became happy again. She even took Ben to see her old studio. Ben stood in the house and could imagine 
how healthy Emily used to be and how spirited she was. Ben went for a walk with Emily at dusk to walk her dog. Emily's eyes lit up when she thought about her life after she got better. Ben just watched her with a smile on his face. She is a simple and optimistic person who is captivating. When the two of them were about to part, Emily couldn't bear to look at him. Then she suddenly went up to Ben and kissed him on the cheek. Ben just smiled and watched her leave. Late at night, Ben sneaks into Emily's studio. Emily said during the day that one of the machines was broken. He wanted to fix the machine and give Emily a surprise. But after that he didn't see Emily for days. Because someone needed him more, this man donated bone marrow without anesthesia. He was in pain and sweating, but he didn't say a word through clenched teeth. He was very weak but very happy for those days because that sweet boy was saved. Later he went to the person to whom he had donated his liver. The lady worked in a welfare agency. She provided him with information about someone else who needed his help. It was a woman who had suffered domestic abuse. Bang gave her his car and house. They escaped to the villa and run free. They face the sea and feel the warmth of spring and the scent of blossoming flowers. On Christmas Eve, Emily invited Ben to her home. She brings out a set of clothes for Ben to change into. In the pink shirt, Ben becomes energetic. He tasted Emily's food and praised her constantly. He hums a song under his breath to make Emily happy. Emily puts on a record. Then she pulls Ben into the living room and dances around. Ben says he has a surprise to and takes Emily out. Emily is happy when she sees the repaired machine in the studio. They kissed each other over the roar of the machine. Ben is struggling at this point because he wants to redeem himself, but he also wants the pleasure of the moment. Emily looked at him tenderly. Emily imagines that she will be lucky to wait for a hard donor so that she could live with Ben after the surgery. They both imagined a happy life of marriage and children, but Ben knew it would be hard. Later at night Emily falls asleep. Ben went back to the hospital and found Emily's doctor. He asks her if there is any hope that Emily will have a donor heart. The doctor looked at him with pity and said that Emily was a rare blood type and her chances of receiving a successful heart transplant were only 3%. Now Ben was completely desperate. He walked out of the hospital and called his best friend's phone number. Ben told his friend that it was time. Then Ben used a knife to scrape open the ice pack and poured it all into the bathtub. After he started draining the water, he dialed the police to tell them that someone was about to die. When the police asked him who was dying, he was silent for a moment. I am. Ben hung up the phone and Saturday down in the tub. The ice was so cold that it kept shivering. Then Ben reached down and dumped all the jellyfish from the bucket into the tub. The jellyfish sticky tentacles covered his arms. He grabbed the curtain in pain and kept fluttering. Gradually, he lost his voice. By the time the paramedics arrived, he was already dead. The next day, when the sun broke through the clouds, Emily's long-awaited pager finally ran. She was rushed to the hospital for a heart transplant, but she didn't know the man who gave her the heart was Ben. In addition, Emily was saved. A blind man received Ben's corneas, and a hockey coach received Ben's kidney. His brother came to the hospital when he got the news. His eyes were red when he saw the various newspapers and helpers messages on Ben's wall. Now he understood everything. Ben completed his atonement with seven organ donations. Emily finally learns the news and is devastated. At the end of the film, Emily meets the blind man. The blind man recognizes her almost as soon as he looks at her. We can say that he saw his heart beating inside her body through his eyes. The two of them embraced each other tightly. The movie, titled Seven Pounds, was released in 2008. It's a seven pound redemption. Behind the unpleasant memories is the soft heart of a man. Although Ben has left this world, but his life continues to live on. And those who received his gift will surely love life more.